Today we've got a really fun ping iron comparison. Uh, the new I-59 kind of fits in right between I-210 and Blueprint. Today we're going to compare them on TrackMan. Thomas is going to hit some shots and we're going to tell you everything you need to know. Hey there golfers, I'm Drew Maholder, Second Swing Golf, joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. Today we're outside on the driving range. We've got TrackMan with us and we've got three irons with us, all from Ping. Uh, the new I-59, if you haven't yet, check out our Swing Report video uh, on the I-59 irons. Also we've got Ping Blueprint and I-210. So if you watch the I-59 Swing Report video, you know that the I-59 kind of falls in between the I-210 and the Blueprint as sort of a replacement for iBlade. Um, so now we've got all three of them here. We're going to test them out. And just by looking at these, Thomas, I mean, they're, they look so different. Like I-210 looks, <laughs> I mean, it's not a huge iron, but it looks massive compared to these. It does look a lot larger. And there's some good players out on tour that are still oh, playing yeah. I-210. Like Lee Westwood's mm -hmm. playing the I-210 irons, one of the better bull strikers in the world. So oh, there's yeah. some great players on tour that play I-210. But then we have these other little sleeker models. So we've got the I-59, which definitely looks a little sleeker, smaller brother to the I-210. And then we've got this uh, Blueprint iron, which we've done initial testing with it about a year ago, and it's, it's sleek. It's, it's mm -hmm. small, it's maybe a little, little bit more intimidating, but <laughs> if you hit it solid, it's still gonna do exactly what you wanna do, and that's what you want out of an iron. Right, and I mean, I think in terms of our blade testing that we've done, I, I wanna say Blueprint is among the smallest, if not the smallest blade iron out there. Um, at least in terms of the you know popular uh, choices out there for blades, Blueprint is among the smallest. So we'll get a kind of a wide range of players' irons because I210 is a player's iron. Right. And it's the one I play in my bag actually, but it's one of the more forgiving, consistent ones out there. And then you get down to I59 and Blueprint where you get kind of less help from the equipment where the player provides that performance, I guess. So. Yeah, so if you're a better player, you're considering ping irons, we got these three different options. Stay tuned for the data. Yeah, this will be a really good test, Thomas. Now, in terms of lofts and then in terms of the shaft, uh, we want to clarify and make sure we're on the same page with uh, each club here. Yep, so today we're going to be testing with the Dynamic Gold 120 golf shaft. This is a bonded fitting component for the Blueprint. So we decided to go with the exact same golf shaft with the uh, I-210 and the I-59. These are our, our fitting heads that we can take the golf shaft out of. But that's why we decided on that golf shaft. Loft, we've got the I-210, 33 degrees of loft on it. Then we've got the Blueprint and the I-59, both 34 degrees of loft. And we'll be testing with some uh, Titus Pro V1X premium golf balls, and we'll see what the numbers tell us. All right, sweet. Are you uh, warmed up and ready to hit some shots, Thomas? I'm ready. That was a really good swing. That's in the hole. That was a very straight shot. That's right at it. Just a touch right. Didn't quite draw back that time. That was really good. It sounded really good. It was. Just pulled it about 50 yards left. All right. Okay, so Thomas, ping I-210, yep. my gamers actually, um, well not my actual gamers, but the irons I play. Um, what did you think about that? Um, now that's not a forged club, so curious on what you think of feel first impression and then we'll kind of also discuss after you do hit some forged irons. But Yeah, so even though it's not forged, it still feels really good. I, mm -hmm. I feel like I hit some two or three, first two shots were, they were, tar they were basically right at the flag. They yeah. were really good swings. I noticed the bull flight, with the exception of one that I pulled a little to the left, seemed like it was a little higher than maybe one I'm kind of kind of used to. So a little higher bull flight, but so which is impressive for a club that's got 33 degrees of loft on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're generating 112 feet on average of height, so you're still getting that ball kind of in that window that you like. Yep. Um, uh, you did have one that, I mean, you have three kind of right down the middle, one that maybe hung out to the right a little bit, and then that one you kind of pulled a tad. but. Otherwise, it's pretty consistent across the board. Uh, your spin was 74, 73 on average. Um, you know, with that consistency deviation of 314. So that's a that's a decent amount of spin for an iron that's got 33 degrees of loft on mm -hmm. it. And that's the one thing that I have found 
I mean, this club's been, I don't know how long now, two, three, four years yeah. now, I've uh, been fitting with, and I've found it's been a great golf club for a player that needs a little bit more spin, a little bit more height. Mm -hmm. And I remember just when I was getting fit, I remember how consistent that was. And it was in, even when I would miss hit one, or I would maybe put one a little bit fat, it would still fly a similar distance, which is what I really liked about that when I was getting fit. So that's why they're on my bag. But I-59 now I'm curious too, because that's kind of the, the sequence to go here, probably I-210, then I-59 right in the middle. Yep. We'll see how that one compares. Yeah, I mean, consistency is going to be impo important. As we go to a little, little smaller club head, it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. The difference I'm seeing between the two clubs just initially is the amount of grooves on the, on the iron. Mm -hmm. I believe there is 13 grooves on the 7 iron for the I-210. And then we have about four more, essentially. Mm -hmm. So they're closer together on a slightly smaller club. So you definitely kind of notice the, the differences in the size oh, yeah, of, the, for sure. of the groups that are looking down there. at them. But let's hit the I-59. That was smoked. That was a good swing there. Did not hit that very well. It almost seems like it's diving a little bit more out of the sky. That one was about two grooves too low on me on that one. Better distance. So I'm noticing when I'm looking down here, not as much offset as say the, the I-210. Right. Just a little sleeker How package. How about like top line and, and just like blade length from heel to toe? How's that? Definitely uh, sleeker from heel to toe. Uh, pretty similar top line, maybe just, just a touch smaller. Okay. Yeah, heel to toe I'm noticing, yeah, just a little bit. It's a little, little smaller. Bit smaller. Just, and then kind of looking at the, at the soles, just a little bit, yep, a little yep. bit smaller as well. It's just a smaller, smaller package. That one sounded really good. That felt like a pretty good swing. All right, five shots with the uh, I-59. All right, so first of all, we kind of talked a little bit about look and feel, but differences yep. there, I mean. I'm well, the feel is, is different with it, with it being forged um, versus cast. Okay. And that, it is noticeable, it definitely feels a little softer, a little more muted sound off the I-59. I don't know if you could notice the difference at, at all, but a little it's bit, just yeah. a little bit. Yeah, and then in terms of the numbers here, you actually spun I-59 a little bit less, um, but I think it was a lot of that too, I think you had caught maybe one a little bit fat, kind of dropped that down because the total carry actually dropped by four yards, which is I think what you'd roughly expect based on loft. So, loft would do that, but you'd expect a little more loft might spin just a little bit yeah. more. So that, that was interesting there, and I think it, part of it is just how you caught the ball a little bit, not quite as clean. Um, on those because your smash was actually on average one three four with the Y fifty nine one four zero with the I two ten so right. that's probably part of it. But. So there's probably one or two in there that were slight outliers. Yeah, yeah. That uh, that led to that, that those numbers being. So actually, off. you know what? I'm gonna try to take. Um, there was one here that you caught with a one two nine. So I'm gonna take that one out once and see how things change. That one was, I believe, you caught that one. With thin. fat and kind of left it out to the right, I believe. There was one that I hit about two grooves low. It was a little to the right. Yeah, so I mean that changes things a little bit. It does bring up the spin to like 72, but it's still um, still lower than the I210. Just so. slightly lower. So yeah. interesting there. But um, we do have one more to test blueprint, like a butter knife. <laughs> um, I'm curious to uh, watch you hit and see how those that performs compared to these two here. All right, let's hit it. How was that? Maybe a, a touch thin and just pulled it just a little left. That was a good swing. That, yep, that looks pretty pure to me. Yep. All right, so Thomas, that's now, we got five with each club. Uh, blueprint there, I mean, how much smaller is that thing compared to these other two? Because 
I can from the naked eye from here I can see the major differences. That must be, is that what I fifty nine there. This you is I fifty nine. Yeah. So it's definitely smaller than I fifty nine by looking at the sole and looking at the top line. It is quite noticeable. Mm -hmm. uh, there were definitely some outliers in the shots that I was hitting. I think that's just the fact that I just didn't hit it as good and I just wasn't yeah. as forgiving as. Oh, and yeah. I'm a very good ball striker, um, but. I just noticed there was a couple of shots that I pulled a little to the left mm -hmm. and didn't get away with. Well, you'll notice, so the dispersion circle, definitely the largest with the blueprint. And you also notice on the numbers on the right side, you can see how the consistency deviation numbers are also higher. So uh, like the spin rate, for example, was on average 6746, but 635 on okay. that consistency. So high so, and low. So yeah. you're getting a lot yeah. higher than that, you're getting lower than that. Um, whereas it was actually, I-59 was very consistent at 195 for that number. Yeah, and don't get me wrong, the, uh, the blueprint feels incredibly good, really soft off the face, looks incredibly good there, but you gotta be a bull striker to play, to play this club. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I'm swinging at my, my top, my, my swing's in really good, good form, I feel fully confident in playing this all the way down to the, to the longer irons. Yeah. But even still, you, you talk about these guys on tour that are playing even I-210, you know, a lot of, you know, there's players, a reason for it. There's a reason for it. Yeah. Just, why make this game hard on yourself? Right. And I mean, these guys, like you were mentioning before with Lee Westwood, these are the best ball strikers in the world. Um, and they're opting for more forgiveness. And it's, it's becoming more popular now, too, where you, uh, more guys are opting for a player's cavity type iron versus a straight blade like Blueprint. Yep. And I think it's just because, like you said, why make the game harder than it needs to be? Where right. you can get that extra forgiveness um, with an I-210 type club. Yeah, and if you're a blade purist, by all means, there's, there's gonna be nothing wrong with playing the the, the blueprint. I took I took a lot of customers into a combo set to try and figure out. Yeah, play these in your in your score, scoring clubs. Mm -hmm. But those clubs, once you start and maybe not going at the flag with that particular club, that's where maybe you play something just to touch a little more forgiving. Yeah. So would you recommend like a blueprint to I-59 set, or maybe blueprint to I-210, or maybe you know even I-59 to I-210? Yeah, I mean the the lofts are so close together. You could you could do blueprint uh, I-59 because the lofts are the exact same. Yeah. So you for sure could do a, a combo set without changing that up a little bit. And then you could add in maybe a four or five iron in the, in the I-210 as well. And even going one step further, so yourself, for example, you're playing a combo set with mm -hmm. I-210 and I-500. Yes. So even in your long iron, you could also add that 500 in there as right, well. Right, which I will say I really recommend. You know, if someone needs a driving iron, so to speak, an I-500 in that three or four iron is a rocket. So. Um, that's uh, that's another great option. You can even blend three sets together if you really wanted to. You can go, you know, I-59 short irons, I-210 mid irons, I-500 at the top. Um, right. So there's a bunch of ways to do it, and Ping, of course, is a leader in terms of fitting and making those sets work for you. They got the retro spec, they got the power spec, they got all types of uh, options for golfers too. Plenty of options. So let's dive into the numbers. So what did we notice? Is there anything that stood out other than the dispersion pattern you were kind of touching right. on? So most spin actually was I-210, which is interesting, interesting. Um, based on the loft being actually the lowest. Yep. Um, the farthest was actually Blueprint, and I think a lot of that was because there was one that was way out here on the left that was a carry of 186. Okay. Um, so we take that out, and that certainly changes things a little yep. bit. But That was my big pull. Yes, yep. that was. Um, in terms of, I wanted to look at curve here, or height and curve. So not surprising, most curve was Blueprint, 51 feet on average to the left, and it was 32 feet with the I-59 and 27 feet with the I-210. So that makes perfect sense. Yep, progression um, is right there. Right, that's exactly what you'd expect. Interesting too, consistency wise, I-210, 112 feet in the air. I-59, 112 feet in the air. Blueprint, 109 feet in the air. So that's, a, I mean, that's kudos yep. to you actually with your swing, but also with each of these clubs, you're gonna, because those, the deviation numbers two, plus or minus two with the I-210, three with the I-59, and seven with the Blueprint. So. It's delivering, you know, what you want, um, yep. and yeah. it's it's not going to waver one way or the other with these clubs, which is that's what you're going to get with these smaller type irons um, versus maybe your game improvement irons are larger. There's a little bit more um, a, a tendency to be erratic with some yep. of those shots. Forgiveness is real, is what it kind of comes down to. And yeah, mm -hmm. this game's hard. I uh, I'm not gonna lie, this, you got to put in a lot of hours to be a very good bull striker, and you know, blueprint. I'd say save this for the can you top of the range players. Yeah. I fifty nine is you could probably lean a little bit a little little bit higher handicapped golfers there too, but still your your better players. And I two ten you could play a wide range. Because yeah. as we notice and we've done in other testing, 
continuously and continuously is a little bit more spin with the i210 yeah and it, it it keeps up it's it's a good golf club and the one thing i'll touch on with i210 too is it's not forged it's yeah. you know it's priced a little bit more reasonable as well but it really still feels really good even though it's not forged yeah they do a really good job with that elastomer in the cavity there that really simulates a forged feel and you said there is a difference between the actual forged um, like i-59 right but yeah. it still has that kind of softer it's not you're not getting a bunch of feedback even when you hit it solid like you would with uh, other cast irons out there so um, really good stuff obviously from ping and i'm playing i-210 for a reason um, but i think i-59 i mean i'm curious about that one for myself because that thing looks pristine um, right. i'm curious about how the extra gr the, the, the extra grooves we've noticed how that performs in the consistent spin so uh, really good performer there i think it fits in nicely yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely a sleeker version of i210, and it's, I think a lot of good players are very interested and in, they will be coming in to check out the i59. So and for those golfers that are looking to uh, get one of these sets in their bag, of course, uh, Second Swing is the place to go. So secondswing.com or one of our five store locations. Uh, get in contact with one of our master fitters and we'll get you set up with an iron fitting uh, for one of these awesome ping sets here. And of course, lastly, uh, subscribe to our channel. We've got all these iron comparisons up here. We love putting them together. We love looking at the data and um, letting you guys get some extra information on these clubs. So Thomas, thanks for joining today, uh, hitting the shots and providing your feedback.